So I'm not a, a statistician or anything. I'm not going to pretend I am. I'm a neuroscientist. But I wanted to make this particular problem really fast, and I'll show you what I have. So to introduce, um, I think probably most people in the room are familiar with ordinary least squares. So the idea is you're minimizing the sum of the squared residuals. Um, it's the best linear unbiased estimator. If you have a lot of data, it works really well. But often it gives you coefficients that have really high variance, especially if you have many predictors and not very many observations. Um, so there are various ways of stabilizing these least squares estimates if you have a lot of, of predictors. And so like ridge regression is one example. But in many cases, we know in advance that only a, a subset of the predictors are actually going to be informative. Um, so one approach that people have used and, and is still really common is to add predictors to the model iteratively or remove them. But the stopping procedures are often kind of ad hoc. Um, so you don't know how many predictors you should actually have in the model. Uh, the regression coefficients that you get out of this procedure end up being larger than they should be. Um, and if you have collinear predictors, if they're too collinear, this doesn't work very well. Um, so uh, a technique that's, that's recently become very popular, I guess not so recently, I think it dates back to the mid-90s, is called lasso. So the idea here is that you modify the objective that you're trying to optimize. So instead of just trying to minimize the sum of squared residuals, you minimize the sum of squared residuals plus a penalty term, um, which is the sum of the absolute values of the coefficients multiplied by some constant. Um, so this ends up shrinking the coefficients. And it actually shrinks some of the coefficients to 0. And the lambda parameter here controls the degree of shrinkage. Um, you have to pick this lambda lambda parameter, but usually people pick it by cross-validation, and that works very well. And so while this function is not differentiable when the coefficients are 0, um, it's concave, and it can be solved relatively efficiently. Why is that two? What? Why is there two? Why is there two? Um, there's a two because that's the, like, you mean the 2n in the? What? Why is the two not absorbed into the lambda? Why is the, it, it's because I tried to make the objective actually fit what I'm using in my code. And so the, the two there is because, like, if you, if you think of it as the log likelihood, then there's a factor of two in there. Um, yeah, so you could put it in lambda. It's just that this is actually what the code does if you give it a specific lambda. Um, so I guess one technique, there are a lot of techniques for optimizing this. And like people come out with new papers on different techniques like several times a month. Uh, but a popular technique that seems to work really well and is also really simple is coordinate descent. So the idea here is that you can solve the lasso problem really easily if you're just trying to optimize a single parameter. So basically, the solution is to do kind of the, the least squares estimate of the parameter, and then you just shrink it. And the way you shrink it is if it's bigger than some amount, then you shrink it towards 0 by that amount. And if it's smaller than some amount, you shrink it all the way to 0. Um, and that's what this soft threshold operator here does. So then you can cycle through each predictor until all of the predictors converge. So you just, this is a very simple operation to do for each predictor. You just do it a lot, and eventually you get the solution. And you can actually solve more than just a least squares problem. You can, you can solve a generalized linear model this way by nesting the inner loop that does this coordinate descent procedure inside an outer loop that does iteratively reweighted least squares, so, so basically Newton's method. And so this is described in a paper. Um, and it's a very highly cited paper. And a lot of people use the code that they provide. But 
And the code that they provide is, is very fast, um, which is why a lot of people use it. But the code doesn't look that nice. So this is what the code looks like. It, it's, I think, so Kate Hyatt was talking earlier today about <coughs> 10,000 line Fortran code that you can't understand. I think, <laughs> I think this is a good example of that. So like I, I, I basically wanted to modify some small things in the models that GLMNet actually fits. And I, I couldn't figure out how to do it. Like, it, it's, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't really understand how anyone would have written this, but I guess, <laughs> I guess it's possible. <laughs> so, so I re-implemented the routine in Julia. Um, and my code is, is 12,000 line, or 1,200 lines of code. Their code is 7,500 lines of code. Um, it can fit linear models, and it can also fit generalized linear models, and it integrates with glm.jl, so it just uses the same distribution and link functions that glm.jl supports. And it achieves pretty good performance. Um, so this is a comparison of the performance of lasso.jl and glm.net. So here, there's this dotted line. Um, so I guess on the y-axis here, it's the ratio of the lasso.jl time to fit the model to the glm not time to fit the model. Um, and this is for the entire regularization path, so it steps through a lot of different lambda values. Um, so everything below this dotted line is faster for lasso.jl than it is for glm.net. Um, and these are just different model parameters. So n is the number of observations. P is the number of predictors in the model or th that are, are trying to be fit, not necessarily that, that come out in the model. Um, and you can see, at least with LLVM 3.6, everything is faster with lasso.jl than with glmnet. Um, and also, when the predictors are highly correlated, lasso.jl is, is much faster than glmnet, but that's because I use this trick where instead of going through all the predictors in the same order each time, you randomly go through different pre predictors. And it, it seems like when they're highly correlated, it makes it converge much faster. Um, so this is one of the, the algorithms that GLMNet implements. GLMNet also implements a slightly different way of doing coordinate descent where you pre-compute more things. And that's always faster with lasso.jl. Um, and we can also fit generalized linear models with lasso.jl. And there, the, the story is a bit different. So we're faster, at least when there are more observations than predictors. But when there are more predictors than observations, still glmnet can sometimes beat lasso.jl. And I still have to figure out why that is. And so there's also more stuff in these packages um, so there's, you can do the elastic net, which is a combined L1 and L2 penalty. You can do the fused lasso, which is a penalty on the difference between successive values in some kind of time series. You can do trend filtering, which is a penalty on sort of like the, the second or third or whatever derivative of some time series. And all of those are implemented in lasso.jl. And I also have a package called lars.jl which implements another algorithm for fitting lasso models and also a significance test for predictors as they come into the lasso path, which has recently been described. All right, and any questions? Yeah. So do you output the entire path or just from one parameter on the, that's what's happening, that's what's nice about JLMS is that you can warm start from the value. Yeah, it's the whole path, so I, I warm start. and. Yeah, you, you could also fit a single lambda, but it, it's meant for the path. And so is there a particular reason why you chose this one? I mean, like, I think this, this particular uh, package is the reason why Optimizer started working on this starting in, say, 2010. And this was done, both of these were actually made by statisticians. Yeah. They were not Optimizer in particular. And uh, there's a tons of things like Vista and Pista, and like now they're using the fact that it's a sum and you can do mini matches. And, I mean, there's so many things you can do from that. And uh, it would be nice to actually give them some because I think yeah. the main reason why this is popular is because it was implemented in R in the early days, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I think it, it still is. Can you repeat the question? Oh, okay, so, so your question was. 
<laughs> so your question was, why this coordinated descent algorithm instead of other algorithms? And I, I guess, so again, I'm not, I'm not someone who knows about these kinds of optimization problems, although there are some people here who probably do know much more about these kinds of optimization problems. But at least like looking through the l literature, it looks like it still does pretty well in a lot of cases. And I don't know, if, if you have suggestions of other algorithms to implement that would be much faster, I would be very interested in that. Uh, so, usually, like, all the, the benchmarks are with 10 to the minus 7. I guess, yeah, you can configure that, but I don't know. <laughs> so, have you compared it to just, like, a, a black box QP solver just to show how big the speed up is? Uh, I have not. I'm sure, so I'm sure that there are benchmarks, but I haven't compared it. Yeah? Uh, there is full sparse matrix support, but I've never benchmarked it. <laughs> so it works, and I, I've tested it, and I know it gives the right results. I don't know how fast it is compared to GLM net sparse matrix support. Yeah? I mean, could heard of the probably coefficient shrink over the path, like GLM net does, like the little charts? Yeah, so I don't have code to make the chart. Obviously, all the information is there. <laughs> but yeah, I agree. Like, there's definitely some tooling to make this useful that doesn't really exist yet. Also, like actually being able to run the cross-validation. Right now, I don't have a tool to do that. How about graphical lasso? Uh, I don't. I haven't implemented graphical lasso. I think I think you could, but I think it's hard with coordinate descent. Yeah. Sorry? So did you compare like for the same all the results with I mean is it like major to, to use instead of GNMNet? Yeah, so yeah, my tests so I have a, a test file that tests fitting different models and it compares the results against GLMNet and they're equivalent. So it, at least it, it seems like it works. <laughs> <laughs>